Welcome back to OCR MEI Further Mathematics B. Today we're doing Chapter 7.1, Introducing Polar Coordinate System. So, uh, polar coordinate system is extremely similar to the Argand expressions, which you have done before during the imaginary sections. It is also one of the most frequently used uh, mathematical tool, uh, and the frequent of application is much higher than Cartesian coordinates because uh, polar coordinates are well helpful in uh, 3D sym uh, symmetric objects such as a disk, a sphere, or uh, just basically any kind of uh, curved surface and it's really helpful to know uh, polar coordinates uh, in a lot of dimensions, however, you're only required to know up to 2Ds, so you are limited to learning about circles and any curve that lies on the polar plane. So you might ask, why polar? Well, when we talk about polar coordinates, there are some things that is very easy to talk about in polar rather than in Cartesian. So let's first start with something that we all know, which is the most standard of standards. We have a circle uh, that doesn't look like a circle, but bear with. Uh, in Cartesian coordinates, we have x and y. In polar, we also have x and y, which is absolutely fine. Uh, they are the real plane which uh, for a Cartesian equation, you have x squared plus y squared equals to radius squared for a circle, which makes sense because when you take a, an arbitrary point and you get x and y, the y, I'll, I'll just mark it with prime. So y prime is the current y value and x prime is the current x value. If you take the this expression, you get a Pythagore Pythagorean uh, equation, which gives us the radius squared. That makes sense, absolutely. Uh, but to derive this expression, it looks a bit complicated. In polar coordinates, however, the same thing can be said with a lot fewer parameters. So we've got. Although uh, we still have two variables for the sake of information uh, required. So in order to give uh, the exact position on a certain dot, we can define, uh, other than the displacement, we can define just one displacement with an angle. So we have the radius r and we have the angle theta. Uh, and in this case, for a circle, r is a constant c, and theta is between two values. Since it is a circle, it starts from 0 up to 2 pi, which makes sense. Make sure you use radians, by the way. It's important to keep things in radians. And nowadays, uh, during further maths, it's almost always better to use radian rather than degrees. So uh, degrees are used for your kind of general reminder of your childhood mathematics when you don't actually need sophis uh, sophisticated maths. Uh, but right now, radians. So uh, circles I've talked about, but hey, the difference ain't that big, is it? So why do polar? So I'm gonna right draw another curve. This time it's gonna look, uh, let's see, how was it supposed to look like? Okay, it's gonna look something like this. Okay, 
So this is a curve, a smooth curve. Uh, bear with this part, it's just my drawing is a bit bad. But uh, this is a smooth curve and this can be expressed in the polar format as r equals to a cosine of theta where a is a an arbitrary value on the curve uh, on the well an arbitrary distance or length how are you going to express this in terms of uh, Cartesian then the answer is very 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 extremely difficult and that's why we use polar coordinates which is a lot simpler in a lot of sense with polar you can draw uh, spirals quite easily without needing to define certain um, equations for Cartesian and you can do differentiations integrations for polar systems just as well as you can do for Cartesians they will yield you the same results except one is much easier than others so let's have a look at um, some other curves that you might come into so um, let's see this is a typical one we've got some sometimes we've got asymptotes and sometimes we've got a kind of um, how should I say it uh, it's periodic let's say so sometimes you get you have curves that goes like this then go downwards into the negative values when when the value of r is negative you're meant to do it with a dotted line then with that and you go back into the positive range go up here then you go back into the negative range then it repeats oscillates this whole cycle and this is uh, one of the polar curves that you will almost definitely come into uh, contact with and um, yeah there aren't much when it comes uh, there aren't much to talk about when it comes to uh, polar coordinates you will be required to know how to sketch these kind of curves which I can talk about uh, right now I guess so let's try to sketch this simple r equals to cosine 3 theta uh, system so it's quite strange when you uh, draw polar because you need to bear with the angle as well as the displacement from the origin so first of all uh, there, it, there are a lot of different approaches if you have a graphics calculator plug it into the graphics calculator let it calculate for you that's just no brainer it's easy it's often used because plotting polar curves are really tedious sometimes but if you need to ever plot it by hand then the first approach I would give you is to mark the eight angles that are special so we have angle theta uh, theta equals to zero pi on four pi on two pi uh, three pi on actually no uh, what am I talking about uh, 3 on 4 pi then we have pi then we have the negatives of these angles negative pi on 4 negative pi on 2 negative 3 on 4 pi and well negative pi is just pi so that doesn't matter so here we have one two three four five six seven eight different angles which correspond to the eight um, 
directions that goes out like a star sign with that if you plug in these values you should be able to get some kind of um, dots that you can align so for this one let's try uh, zero so cosine of three theta three lots of zero that's plus one so we have one dot over here then when we go to pi uh, we have three pi cosine three pi uh, it's also helpful when you draw out the trigonometric uh, functions so let's see so we've got two pi here this is three pi so let's see three pi is minus one so we've got over here uh, but negative which goes back over to this dot so we have a double dot uh, then we have let's see pi on 4 with cosine 3 pi on 4 which is 3 pi on 4 is over here so this is short of minus 1 but it's uh, let's see so when it goes up to this uh, angle this line this diagonal line you have a negative value so it's somewhere over here then we have pi on 2 pi on 2 times 3 gives us 3 pi on 2 so 1 this is 3 pi on 2 uh, and that would be just a straight up 0 so that is on the origin and you keep doing that uh, until you get a certain pattern I guess so let's see so we started off over here then uh, as we go up we went down, uh, let's see, zero length, then we go to a negative, so we have a transition to zero, which means that we kind of went this way through down and ah dotted lines by the way and if you if you repeat this process and uh, you should get something in this sort of uh, three leaf pattern and it should be symmetric polar and I'm not drawing this properly but uh, what you would have to do is to use your calculator plug in a lot of numbers then essentially draw out the polar curve as, as shown so uh, for this cosine of 3 theta it is because it's a 3 theta you will get 3 leaves and that applies for uh, I think all the trigonometric expressions and the extremes are at 1 and these will have radius 1 as well because the maximum distance is always 1 so and not to say the minimum distance is uh, well minus 1 which is a dotted extreme uh, I can't quite remember where the uh, real, the positive negative uh, boundaries are, uh, which is my bad, but uh, you can work that out from uh, just plugging in numbers and it will always transition 
from the dots so I think this leaf should all be negative and this should be all be positive anyway yeah um, you just do this maneuver and try to figure out what's gonna happen with polars that's all I can talk about there are also other ways that you can do differentiation uh, dr by d theta to find minimum uh, to find stationary points such as this point and that point this point this point and that's about it I think so uh, if you differentiate this you should be able to get uh, a solution for stationary points and basically apply your two uh, Cartesian sketching skill and you should be able to find a an acceptable curve so it's important that you practice your sketching skills uh, and uh, use calculus to find the maxima and minima for these curves can be very helpful sometimes they'll give you a uh, sketched curve and ask you to find the point at which it goes to maximum or minimum depending on the curve you can use a calculus approach or you can just straight up say because according to the polar curve uh, it is straight up a an a sign something which means that because sign something ha has to always have maximum of one the maximum of that particular distance has to be just I think what did I say a or three I can't remember so just basically apply your common sense and you should be able to find the maximum and minimums so the questions today is to sketch the falling curve and um, the polar coordinates with uh, theta range from 0 to 2 pi so I should actually write that down so uh, d theta is defined between 2 pi and 0 so that would be a lot more helpful when it comes to sketching so some polar curves have infinite uh, angle range so it can go up to 70 pi and it would be different from 2 pi so yeah basically uh, just do the sketch of the following just label the x and y axes with the values that you can confirm and uh, yeah uh, I'll give you five seconds to pause and do the questions and I'll show the answer in five, four, three, two, one. So we have the answers shown right here. So uh, the uh, key thing that I want you to note is that for this one there aren't a negative domain uh, range, so everything is solid line. And over here we have two. Uh, patch of negative values which means that they are dotted lines and to be honest that's it for polar sketching I don't think there are much to talk about uh, when it comes to polar sketches uh, as I said if you have a graphics calculator it would just not even be necessary for you to know how to sketch a polar curve however it's also quite nice to know how to draw pretty sketches don't you think uh, but this wraps up this video I hope you've learned something if you have any questions to do with polar curves do let me know in the comment section below and I will try to help you as much as I can for now thank you uh, for watching and I will see you on my next one